we are um, well known for solar, but if you look a little bit back, solar was also um, a an, an pure off-grid topic um, some decades ago and their storage was always um, a key component, um, also a weak component at that time. And um, the older colleagues of mine um, um, have been busy in working on battery storage for quite a long time. Um, nowadays we see as also storage is a big topic in the on-grid application, so we see that the two worlds on and off-grid are growing together. In both applications we need storage and um, storage is almost nothing without an appropriate and smart energy management system. So um, to summarize, those two worlds are growing together and um, we are very um, active um, in the field of developing um, battery systems mainly lithium-ion battery systems, so I would say 90% of our projects are at the moment lithium-ion batteries. Mm -hmm. And um, we are developing optimized um, cooling systems, optimizing the thermal management. The thermal management, the cooling has to be highly efficient because it needs also um, energy and reduces the overall um, AC, AC round trip efficiency. Um, but secondly, um, the thermal management is also an, an issue for safety and an, an issue for aging. So um, aging of cells um, and the velocity of the aging mechanism strongly depend on the thermal management. And um, therefore, um, the cooling system has also to be highly effective. So not only highly efficient, but also highly effective. Then secondly, battery management is very important um, to have a precise determination of state of, state of charge, state of health, and also forecasting um, the aging and the lifetime, which gives us then a clear indication when um, a system or a cell or a module has to be replaced. And um, system integration is a very important um, um, issue. And then we come to, uh, to the question of an overall system which has to provide highly efficient um, storage capabilities, which has to be reliable, which has to be safe, and which has to, uh, to last for a long time. And all of this um, leads then to also to reduce um, levelized cost of electricity storage, which uh, makes then um, the system, let's say, bankable. But bankable means also we have to take care for quality assurance. And here we are um, strongly active with our partner VDE, um, offering support in um, system dimensioning. Therefore, we are using our simulation tools. The simulation tools um, use our own developed models and the models are validated with our um, data which we are gathering from the laboratory but as well as from our field experiences. And um, then we support also in the selection of components, um, products, systems. We are supporting um, in the commissioning phase, which is very important. There are also a lot of features ca can be made, which also um, can, uh, at the end of the day, destroy the economics of a project. And um, we are also um, offer services in terms of monitoring. Monitoring is very important as um, for new technologies, as we do not have long-term experience with lithium-ion batteries. Um, in the, in, the, in the stationary application and also in the electromobile application. We only have long-term experience in the mobile um, sector, mobile phones, laptops, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but in stationary applications, coming back to this, we only have long-term experience with lead-acid batteries and with nickel-based batteries, but not with lead-to-mine batteries. And therefore, um, you can imagine that a lot of systems um, are not working as promised, um, so let's say the positive way, um, during our monitoring campaigns, we identify a lot of optimization potential. The variety is really huge what we see on the market. But let's say, um, let's talk only about high quality cells. And there um, are designs um, for really different applications and the different applications have also different requirements. So if you look on um, what Tesla is doing, Tesla is using um, small cells, 18650 or 2700 or 21700. So um, with the small um, cells at, at the moment you can achieve highest energy densities. If you pack this to a huge battery pack like Tesla is doing this, so 100 kilowatt hours, and if you consider that um, 
such a, um, a car, typically the automotive industry is thinking of 10 years lifetime, then um, with a typical European driving cycle, like the new European driver cycle, which is the basis for such considerations, this will lead to 600 or 700 equivalent full cycles. And for this, the cells are designed. High energy density, but um, reduced numbers of equivalent full cycles, but they are sufficiently uh, and a perfect um, um, solution for, uh, for Tesla with their approach. But um, you can imagine if the same cell would be used in stationary applications and for example in Germany um, for the self-consumption and self-sufficiency case we have typically 200, sometimes more, sometimes um, less equivalent full cycles. This would mean the cell has to be replaced every three to four years, the battery pack. So, um, and that's the reason why in such systems different cells are used, which provide higher um, cycle numbers, but um, which provide at the same time um, less um, energy density. But in stationary applications, energy density is not, has not the highest priority. Obviously, we all want to see batteries safer, and we all want to see them last yeah, as long as they can. Mm. But you're also saying that some of the impact of the work you do is in terms of giving some, uh, to maybe mitigating the uncertainty of the financial sector. Exactly. So and when adding some bankability yeah. into projects. Exactly. So when we are talking about um, quality assurance, um, quality assurance is a highly um, well, well, um, value topic of the financial sector, of the insurance sector, and which is also a question of the investability um, possibilities and the question if, if a project is bankable or not. So um, those guys of those sectors, they are interested, for example, in what's happening after seven, eight years when a component of the system has a failure and has to be replaced. Um, can I easily exchange the battery inverter? Um, what happens if the battery inverter is not offered anymore from um, this manufacturer or in the worst case um, what if the, this battery manufacturer disappeared from the market um, and um, are there any standards can I easily replace it with an inverter from another company no you cannot because um, lithium-ion batteries have their own battery management they have to communicate with a field bus um, to the uh, battery inverter and to the energy management but what's happening here is that we do not have any standard um, available, so each company has its own solution and um, the battery manufacturer together with the battery system manufacturer um, have adapted one um, proprietary um, solution. So um, if you have to replace this inverter now with a an, um, um, with an, um, component from a different manufacturer, somebody has to do this adaptation work. Adaptation work means money, means cost, and who is paying for this. So, um, and this is a high risk, um, which um, could also destroy the economics of such a project. And then you can um, um, ca come to a point that um, the financial sector um, says, well, this project is not bankable for us. And um, so they really require standards um, to have reduced the risks. Um, and this is what they also said yesterday in our Bankability session they require for standards and unfortunately the industry is lacking um, these um, requirements behind and um, hopefully this will change in the future but for sure setting standards is nothing which can happen from um, today to tomorrow so in the meantime um, reducing risks towards risk mitigation um, is very very important and this is why um, services like we are offering in this field of independent engineering supporting along the whole project value chain from the project idea until the project commissioning and um, monitoring of the, of the project um, during the, um, its lifetime is very important. And um, secondly, we are also talking about um, that at a certain point, after a couple of years um, and the project is finished, it has to be decommissioned and then also a question of recycling arises. And, this means also um, the ecological footprint. And also here we support um, the companies because this is even more requested today. Um, and will be even more requested in the future 
what's the ecological footprint um, of such systems? The recycling chain for lead acid batteries is, is really quite good. You know, do you think that kind of thing is feasible with lithium ion or is it? Well, we, we just had a session also um, dealing with the raw materials, where are coming the raw materials from. Uh -huh. and, um, if you looked at um, cobalt, for example, um, the main um, sourcing is done at the moment from the um, um, from the Republic of Congo yes, yeah, yeah. and Demo Democratic Republic of Congo. And um, so, in the past, recycling um, has focused on the additives like cobalt on the, on the expensive additives um, for the for the um, batteries which came from the mobile sector, from the laptop sector, but if we are looking now on, on this mass market stationary applications as well as electromobility, we have to see that um, also we need recycling for the lithium itself and the other additives. And um, such um, um, projects are at the moment in, in the planning and realization and demonstration phase. Um, it's still a kind of also um, a, a topic of research and development, so Partner Institute of our Fraunhofer Society is working strongly on this, um, but also the industrial sector, and I would say it's only a question of time, and here we are talking about short-term um, um, time frames, that we see also recycling um, capabilities um, in the market. Do you see the second life reusing of EV batteries for stationary storage as an, an effective reuse for those batteries? Well, I would say in theory, yes. We also consider this in projects. The problem is um, you, you clearly need um, information on the history of the battery in this first life um, to estimate, with the help also of simulation tools, um, to estimate the remaining lifetime and therefore giving this um, module in its second life a value. But secondly, it has also to be adapted to the um, components, um, to the other system components which are used in the stationary sector, to the battery inverter. And this might look a little bit different than the power electronics inside an electric car, the onboard charger, the offboard charger, and uh, the converter to the, uh, to the motor, to the electromotor. So again, there's also adaptation work, and I would say um, this could be um, combined with such high cost that um, it's not um, economic justifiable um, to go into this direction. Maybe um, also, um, let's say, if there are some um, um, interfaces where, for example, the car company do not want to um, provide to second use applications and the providers of the second use applications, um, this could be an additional problem. So maybe um, the car companies themselves, they're using those batteries, for example, for stationary um, applications um, in fast charging stations, where we also need a buffer. Um, otherwise, we would affect um, the, the grid too much. So maybe this could be a solution. But um, to be a little bit um, um, proper, um, no, um, to be a little bit um, Hush in, in argumentation, I would say the car industry, the OEMs, they like Second Life at the moment very much because then they do not have to take care of recycling because they are selling um, those batteries to another company and they have to take care afterwards for the recycling. Maybe. Are there any sort of real big trends that you've seen at this show that you think hmm. uh, are worth commenting on? Well, um, I would say um, um, the show shows a lot of home storage solutions because we are in Germany and in Germany um, um, residential applications is a huge topic, self-consumption, self-sufficiency and hopefully with the change um, in our regulatory framework also commercial systems will be a big topic which is internationally in the US and um, also utility scale um, offering primary control power in Italy, in England, also in Germany. Um, but um, primary control power market is limited, so um, after home storage and commercial storage for self-consumption and self-sufficiency, the next step will be big storage um, systems in combination with renewable power plants like PV parks, like wind parks, um, which is um, internationally already done, like in China and the US, and this will come up in Europe as well in the near future, they are really convinced. 
Um, but um, again, we need also those commercial storage systems um, installed in supermarkets together with a PV system on the rooftop and um, together with, um, um, for example, for bakery production lines, an ideal um, case because they're producing at night, the sun is shining a day, ideal um, case for, for storage. But there, the regulatory framework has to be adapted as well as for district storage. And those are capacities which can do them more than only storing solar electricity. They can then be used additionally to offer grid services and have, have then the possibility to get um, some additional revenues. And this could be an interesting case. So the big storage systems um, or bigger storage systems district level, commercial level and utility scale where, they are, where we are then really talking about the megawatts. So this is the next step um, and yeah, I'm really convinced the technical solutions are there. The regulatory framework in a couple of countries is lacking behind. I was just wondering about the technical challenges faced by yeah, multi-use application batteries mm -hmm. and whether that presents a lot more, I mean I presume that would present a lot more challenges in terms of lifetime of the battery Yes, so, yes, yes, yes yeah. and no, it depends on which um, battery technology you're selecting. So lithium-ion batteries is a whole family of different technologies. And um, some of them, high quality um, cells, offer a huge number of equivalent full cycles, up to 4,000, 5,000. And if you consider that only for storing solar electricity, typically in our weather conditions in middle Europe, you have 200 equivalent full cycles, so this means even so, um, the calendar lifetime would be 20 years. This battery um, would um, have a maximum 4,000 equivalent full cycles. So maybe the calendar lifetime is less, but the um, cycle um, numbers are still in this range. So this would mean only having it uh, as a storage for storing solar electricity. This would mean um, um, until the end of life, due to the calendar lifetime, the, the system hasn't performed as much as cycles as it could. So multiple um, use with high quality cells could lead to the number of equivalent full cycles the technology can also provide. And this means it improves um, the economics because um, um, you would reduce the levelized cost of electricity storage just because you're cycling it as much um, as, as the technology also provides. Dr. Vettel, it was really interesting. Thanks, Thanks very much for your time.